a situation where some composers compose at the keyboard. Some great composers, people like Michael Tippett, was never away from the keyboard. Other composers compose totally away from the keyboard. Uh, and probably most composers do a bit of both. Composition, at least for me, is more like architecture than probably any other art, in the sense that uh, it's the building blocks. In other words, I very often start with a very small little idea like But I would then look at something like that and decide what I can do with it. And um, maybe Mars, which is called Malacandra now from the new album, is, pre is precisely the idea in question. That has a few very simple ideas which go to make up the whole tapestry of the music. You've got... Um, which is just a little pattern like that boring in itself but it immediately implies something because you've got this key but that note tells you that there's an ambiguity about the the um, the context of that chord is it So all those notes are possible in there, and they all have um, possibilities. In other words, they're ambiguous. That's what makes music really interesting, because when we, the things that make us listen, that, that draw us into things, are curiosity. Oh, well, where's that going then next? Now, we don't consciously think that when we're listening to music. But those sort of things do draw us in. And if you have a, a kind of musical question mark, for example, the very beginning of In the Region of the Summer Stars represents the tarot card, the fool. Now, the fool is you or me or anybody who is asking a question of the tarot. So I had to try and devise a, um, a musical equivalent to this. So what what do we do? We need we need a piece an idea, a musical idea that asks a question. And it does that twice. And that does have a sort of what? And then the answer comes back. Like that and that is an answer but in itself contains another question what's that all about if it had just been there's the answer boys it's C major there can be absolutely no doubt about that I know what I'm talking about if I go my god there's a new question beyond the horizon of the first one and that was ultimately the, the idea behind uh, The Fool. Now, people who listen to it don't think, oh, Mr. Godfrey, a clever old thing, or young thing as I was at the time. Look what he's done there. He's asked a musical question. And look, the answer is another question itself. That's not how it works. But the effect of it is that it draws people into the next stage, because all that really is is the sort of the clearing of the throat, if you like, before the album proper begins. Mm -hmm. And that is an example of the way that I compose.
they're all based on the same idea. I'm just chattering. I'm just, I'm just having a conversation because ultimately music is like a conversation. True musical phrases are the way I'm talking to you now, the way people speak to each other in pubs. What? What do you mean? What do you mean? What can you possibly mean by that? So it's a little bit rhetorical, but nevertheless, that's what music does. It takes an idea and it examines it and it looks at it. And if you're a gigantic genius like Beethoven, then from the simplest building blocks, the most ordinary conceivable material, you can build an edifice of absolutely wonderful music. And that's more the sort of composer I am than uh, a composer of songs with lyrics.